Hello there and welcome to the channel. Today I thought we'd take a look at a piece of software called Picasa that's been a, around for a, a good many years. It's um, owned by Google and is a piece of uh, photo editing and viewing software but also has some um, photo editing functionality in it and is available for download from Google for free. It's um, been discontinued by them. Um, they no longer, um, well, they have no longer produced any updates to Picasa since 2015. So um, whilst it did used to uh, work with raw files since 2015, it no longer works with any new, um, any new raw images for um, camera models after, after that time. So, yeah, so Picasso was released in originally in 2002 um, by a company called Livescape. Um, two years later, it was acquired by Google, who kept it and still own it. But uh, in 2015, as I say, they, they've stopped producing updates to it. They're now going in the direction of their Google Photos. And so um, I suspect that uh, Picasso will either disappear off the um, download platform from Google or they may just leave it there um, but just no longer um, support it. Um, so I suspect if you think you have a, a use for a, a, a nice piece of free software for photo editing this, this might be used for you but um, grab it while you can because it may disappear. Um, I'll put links in the um, comments below to the download pages for uh, Windows and Mac. Um, originally it was available to Linux. I'll check if there's a still a download for that. If there is, I'll, uh, I'll add that too. Um, but um, yeah, so it's easy to use. It's, it's not, um, if you're into using Adobe, uh, Photoshop and that kind of stuff, Luminar Neo, this is, is probably not a product for you, but if you just want a cheap, well, free piece of software for doing a little bit of occasional editing, this might be useful. So anyway, let's, um, let's take a quick look at what this software does. So um, I've downloaded Picasa. It was uh, just an executable file. It's a next, next installation. And when you run it, it opens up pretty much like this, but obviously without any images. Um, because this is a viewing piece of software, it does, um, one of its aims is to show you every picture that you've got on your computer, which um, is not certainly not something I want. Um, I've got thousands and thousands of pictures and I don't want, I don't want my um, computer chugging away in the background and trying to use thumbnails for um for Picasso. So um the way I've got around um it doing that is if I show you what I've done to get these pictures here. So what I did was I went to file and add file to Picasso to Picasso. I then navigated to a folder that I've created for this this video called Picasso on my on my NAS box and and in that in that folder, I put six files in there just to um, use as an example to show you some some pictures. Um, I asked all I asked Picasso to do was show me the very first file in that folder, and then I clicked open. I'm going to cancel here now because I've already done this once. And what it did was, it didn't just show me the one file that I asked it to open. It then takes every file in that folder. And that's what Picasso does. Anytime you point it towards a, a file, it will try to give you, um, or it will give you in most cases, um, every picture that's in the folder. So um, just be aware of that. If you do get, um, if you are hunting around on here and you click on things and you, then you find you've got loads and loads of pictures that you don't really want on display, you can just right click on it and you can remove from Picasso doesn't delete the files from your um, original file location. It just takes them back out from Picasso. So that's quite helpful. So 
In fact, I had to do that before this video so that I wasn't sharing all my other pictures and folders with you, um, and that worked quite well. So here we've got uh, six pictures. We're only we're just going to look at one very briefly. So this isn't going to be a long video. What I wanted to show you though. Um, first of all, is you'll see that two of these pictures look a bit odd. So this one and this one, firstly, they look odd because they're me and I look odd. But secondly, there's a, there's a strange sheen to them. And that is because they are raw files. And if you click on the file, you do get some file information down here, which is, which is quite handy. You can see that it's, um, we've got the file name and the suffix, which is NEF. And that means it's a Nikon uh, raw file, Nikon electronic format, if I remember rightly. And the photo was taken on the 1st of September this year. So it's nice and recent and uh, got the file size. So useful bit of information, but there's this sheen to it. And basically what that's saying is that this file will not work correctly in Picasa because it's after the um, 2015 date when they stopped servicing um, new profiles. So just out of interest though, if I open up this file here by double clicking on it, you can see it's got this terrible sheen to it. Um, that said, the remaining um, editing tools will work, but you're never going to have a decent picture because it's got this, this overlay um, cast to it. So However, we'll, uh, we'll look at editing in just a sec. You do have, so once you've opened up the picture, which is quite, again, quite handy, you've got a histogram to your left, and we'll have a look at that in when we edit a picture in a second. And we've got some camera details, which is always um, useful. I can see that this picture was taken on my Nikon D7500. I've got um, shut speed aperture and ISO information there. And um, it's even telling me um, what lens I was using, what focal length was on the picture. So that's all useful stuff, quite for free. Can't um, can't knock it, just I can't use this picture because of that color cast. So you've also, um, just coming down here to the bottom right of the picture, you've got this little slider, you can, you can zoom in, zoom out of your picture. Uh, useful for when you do sharpening, things like that. And we'll uh, see that again in just a moment. So, Okay, so not going to make any changes to this. It's no point. I can't get rid of this color cast. So I'm going to go click on this button here to go back to the library. So let's do that. Boom. Back to the library. So we're back to our original images. So these two here, this one and this one, they're both gone. As they're, they're too recent. They're raw files. Um, so Picasa really is only offering a service for, for your JPEGs. However, um, if we look at this file here, I'll click on that. And if we come down and look at the file information on the bottom here, you can see here again, it's a Nikon format raw file. Um, the date was 2006. So that's before um, Google ceased updating their um, Picasa. So this, this file, although it's a raw file, can be edited because there is a profile for it so that's that's quite handy and we'll we'll take a, a look in that um in fact let's do that now so yeah so old raw files you stand the possibility that they may be edited certainly new stuff no so okay let's double click on this old image again so we've got our helpful little histogram i do love a histogram um, we can see that it was taken on a Nikon D70S, which um, my very first um, digital SLR. Um, 180 for second, uh, F13, ISO 200. Um, we've got, again, we've got basic details down there, quite useful. Anyway, so let's look at the um, editing um, menus that we get with this file. So. Across here on the left-hand side, um, we've got these tabs. Um, and if I flick through them, we'll just take a, a better look at them in just a second, just to show you what the sort of stuff. So they are quite clunky and um, 
easy to follow, I suppose. But um, if you're into photo editing, you're, you, you're perhaps going to want something a bit more, uh, a bit more modern than than that. But however, it's got it's got a couple of good features, and again, the important thing is it's for free. So um, we're on the um, commonly needed fixes tab at the moment, first tab, and the um, first thing I would use would be the um, crop. And with the crop options, you get uh, a drop down, which gives you uh, a choice of um, ratios and suggested crop sizes. Um, but you can um, add custom sizes as well. I tend to go for the 4-3 ratio, so I'm going to select that. Once you've selected what you want, you then get three pictures as it tries to help you um, decide what kind of crop you want. And if I click on the first one there, you'll see it's added it to the picture, but this is expandable. If I just come back and choose the next one, you can see it's now gone landscape. And again, I can change that around, move it around to my heart's content. And this one will be more the fuller page size in the portrait mode. Still doesn't quite uh, fill the page, but this is the one I would go for because this is the 4-3 ratio. So um, I'm going to pull that out to full size and then work on a, what suits me best. And I think for this image, that's just going to do fine. And I'm going to press return. So we've now got that crop. Coming back to that slider, down the bottom here, we can we can zoom in um, quite nicely. It's quite handy, particularly when you do sharpening something like that. That's quite nice. So we'll bear that in mind. Um, other little tools that you've got here while you're in this in this tab, you can straighten your image. You've got a red eye removal bit. I'm feeling lucky. I never do, so I never go there. Um, Auto contrast. Um, let me click on that and see what the auto contrast does. You can see this picture here has got terrible white balance. So let's see what auto con contrast does. And okay, it's it's adjusted the contrast on the image. But, um, yeah, actually not too bad. I might just leave that in. Auto color. There, it's tried to correct the um, the white balance, which considering how poor the original image was hasn't done a particularly um bad job you've got some retouch options there if you click in there um you can play around i'm not gonna go in there what's it do click to select the area to fix then move the mouse to see a preview of the replacement area i'll uh i think i'll cancel that leave that well alone whatever that does okay um and when you if you do make any changes like we've done the auto color there you do get an undo um some of the, some of these options you'll get a slider you can change it a little bit um some of them are all or nothing but you will you, you do get an undo so that's that's quite handy if you don't like it just undo it move along to the next tab we've got um color temperature um so we can warm up or cool down this picture a bit more if we want to and let's just Give you a look, give you a look. See, it's got a horrible sheen to it again because I didn't get the um, color temperature right in camera when I took this all those years ago. It's one of my first shoots, I'm sure, long, long time ago. So, and uh, we've got a neutral color picker here. Let's see what that does. Okay, nothing, nothing so so special. Let's have a look at the next tab. Um, this one, um, it's got a number of choices. You can make image, you can add sepia, black and white, etc., etc. Probably the most useful one is there is a sharpening tool. And if you click on that, you, um, you've got a slider and you can increase the sharpening or decrease the sharpening if you need to. And again, um, by zooming in on the image, this, again, this comes in quite handy there. You can see, um, what works for you so let's just try let's just try really ramming up the, the the sharpening so you can see it does actually have quite a quite a strong effect 
on that, bring that back down. Let's bring that to the middle. How's that? Um, I think, to be honest, I might um, leave that at that. So once you've um, selected what you want, click apply and you've got it. And let's just zoom out that picture now. And there we go. So very basic editing on this. Um, there isn't much more. It, this used to have a, a web-based um, file sharing utility. I think that's all been um, shut down by Google as well. So I think this is pretty much what you get from this um, bit software. But um, yeah, nice little bit of software. If, um, if you need something and you don't want to pay money for photo or editing, maybe it's to you. And once I've made changes to a picture, if it was me, I would then um, save this as a separate file, not the original file. I always want to keep the original file. And to do that, I would just go file, do the save as, and then come down to the original file number. I would then just add underscore and make a change. So I would call this underscore Picasso. So I know that file has been edited by Picasso and then that's just what I would do and then um, let's go back to library and you can see there now is the second file and if I click on that one you can see it's got the Picasso.jpg which is the one that we've just worked on so yep there you go and um, yeah that's pretty much it so I just thought it's worth showing you this before it disappears off the shelf altogether uh, if indeed it does and um, yeah so we're there so hope you found this useful and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you for your time and goodbye